What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I am doing great because I have the new Dior Summer 2023 collection to review for you all today. I have both of the eyeshadow palettes. I have one of the luminizers and I have the limited edition bronzer to show you all. We're going to be doing swatches, comparisons, daylight applications. And of course, I'm going to let you guys know if anything in this collection is worth it. So if you want to hear all of my thoughts, then keep watching. All right, party people, let's get into it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really really helps me out. Also, all these products, anything that is on my face today, you guys know the drill. I'm going to link that in the description box down below. If you would like to support my channel, shopping through my links is a really great way to do so. And if you are new here, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia. I'm a luxury beauty addict. I upload content every single week on luxury beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. And I heavily focus on Dior, Chanel, Tom Ford, and a lot of other Sephora and luxury brands. So if you love luxury makeup, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And you can click the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video because it happens multiple times a week. As expected, this collection is giving major summer vibes. And in fact, your girl here, I read some of the fine print on the Dior website. I did do some sleuthing. And it looks like this collection is inspired by a very specific luxury hotel on the French Riviera. Era. The hotel is called Hotel de Cap Eden Rock. I'll put some photos up here so you guys can see how absolutely gorgeous this hotel looks. It's very expensive. And I wanted to know, do any of you know about this hotel? Is this like famous or something? Do I just not know about it? I know a lot of celebrities go here. I did see that they are opening up a Dior spa at this hotel this month. So maybe that's a part of it. Maybe they're trying to promote the spa, something like that. I don't know, friends. But regardless, I thought that, you know, maybe as we go through this review, maybe as we use these products, we can all kind of imagine ourselves at the hotel at the French Riviera, maybe sipping some rosé, you know, made in Provence, eating delicious seafood or whatever food is to your liking. Maybe we can like imagine ourselves there. You know, I did take a look at the availability of the hotel. Unfortunately, they are booked all summer, but they do have a couple of nights open this month for about 2,000 euros a night. So if you actually want to go to the hotel, you might have to wait till next summer or you and I can just enjoy this makeup collection from Dior Beauty. Let's harness that fantasy, hold on to it, and get into the makeup. First, I'm gonna talk about the eyeshadows, then I'm gonna talk about the bronzers, then the luminizers, then I will share my final thoughts on everything, friends. Timestamps are gonna be down below in case you're short on time. Let's dive into the eyeshadow palettes. So these are the Dior Summer Quince. These retail for $65. I have noticed that the limited edition palettes are $65 instead of 62. These are made in France. They have a six month shelf life. And I know it's a little bit faded here, but I'll show you guys some close-ups of when these were new. They have kind of like a cute little, I don't know, nautical pattern on the front. I don't know what I would call this. It's a nautical pattern, maybe inspired by something at the hotel. The first palette that I have for you today, friends, is number 533 Rivage. This is described as having a luminous orange, satiny nude tones, and a sun-drenched white. This is not a super duper pigmented palette. It's very ethereal. In fact, when I first got this palette, I immediately thought of like a sandy beach. The browns here, they're very soft. They're very sandy. The white and the gold kind of remind me of like the sun and the sparkle that you get from the sun on the water and the sand. And then you kind of have this like more orangey tone as well, which just kind of ties everything together. And in fact, I looked it up, Rivage does mean shore. So maybe I am on track there with my inspiration. The other palette in the collection is number 233 Eden Rock, named after the hotel, I presume. And it is described as having a glittery azure blue, pearly bronze shades, and a luminous ivory. You guys will notice this doesn't look that much different from Ravage. The palettes are pretty similar. I would not say that this blue is glittery. Actually, all of the shades out of both of the palettes are a satin formula. There's no glitter. There's no like topper shades. There's no true mattes. Everything is like that classic Dior satin that we are used to getting. I do right off the bat before we get into the demo, I think it's going to be helpful to show you guys comparison swatches of both of these palettes side by side. Notice how a lot of the tones are pretty similar, but what I think you're also going to notice is that Ravage, just in general, is softer and more transparent, whereas you're getting more pigmentation from Eden Rock. So I think that's going to help right off the bat, and you can also see 
that everything is kind of like that satin tone. Also real quick, I wanna show you a side-by-side -side of last year's Dior Riviera palettes. This was the summer collection that they launched last year. I saw a couple comments on Instagram and just social media, people saying that these look exactly like last year's palettes. I would have to disagree. I think that they look pretty different. I think that these here are much more neutral in tone. I, I don't really think that the colors match up at all. The ones that we saw last year, they had a lot more like purpley and coral tones. So hopefully this side by side helps you guys. If you were concerned of these being, you know, dupes with last year, I don't necessarily think you have to worry about that. Now it's time for our demo. We're going to start off doing a look with Ravage. If you're new here, I film everything in natural light so it's as realistic as possible. So let's dive into the look that I created with this palette. First off, I started off with the light brown center shade and I just applied that to the crease. This is like a really nice base shade that you can use with any of the other colors that are in this palette. It's a good one and done look. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of this sand, just like a nice summery brown. Then I dipped into the gold and I applied that to the center of the lid. Once again, this is super soft. It's not gonna be like a blinding gold. It's not gonna be a super strong yellow. It's more of a neutral and it kind of blends together with that lighter brown. Then I went back into the lighter brown and I just applied that to the lower lash line to kind of start matching up the bottom half of the eye. Then I went in with the orange and I applied that to the outer half of the eye. Now this orange, just like the yellow, it's not super duper strong. If you're afraid of like these bright oranges and really strong warm tones. I don't think you necessarily need to be afraid of that orange. It's very, very soft. To me, it's more of like a neutral and you definitely can get a little bit more pigment if you use the little sponge applicator to apply it. Then I went into the deeper brown shade in the palette and I applied that to the outer half of the eye. I actually really like this shade. I think it has a very beautiful tone. It's still very soft though. Like it adds a little bit of depth, but you're not gonna be able to get like a super smoky look with this color or this palette in general. It's supposed to be very light, very beachy, very sort of easy. It's not a smoky eye palette. And then finally, my favorite shade in the palette is that white. I applied that to the inner corner of the eye with the little sponge applicator. I really like to use these because I feel like it gives me just enough pigment to kind of really lay it on and get that brightening effect on the inner corner of the eye. This white, it's pretty pigmented and it's very pretty and pearlescent. And then as the last step, this is how I've been wearing this palette. I went in with the Victoria Beckham Beauty Eyeliner in the shade Bronze and I smudged that into the lash line. I applied some mascara and this is the final look with Revage. You can do this without the eyeliner, but I really like the look. I, I feel like it's very, you know, easy, bronze, summery type of look that can go from day to night. I will link that eyeliner down below. It is one of my favorites. I think that this is a really pretty neutral and like I said, easy look for summer. But do notice, friends, it is very light. You don't see like a huge contrast between a lot of these tones because the colors are very similar. It's a very soft, ethereal look. And then next up, of course, we have the Eden Rock palette. Let me show you the look that I did, which is the look that I'm wearing today with this palette. First, I dipped into that center light brown and just like the other palette, I applied that in the crease. But notice friends, how instantly this one is more pigmented than Rivage. It's not that it's better, it's just more pigmented. So if you're looking for more pigment, I just wanna point this out to you all. Next up, I went in with that sandy warm brown. I applied that all over the lid. This one is very warm, but just like the other one, it's not orange. It's a little bit deeper in tone. Like you can kind of tell the color, point out the color a little bit more easily, but it is still pretty soft. It's very neutral. Then I applied those same two colors along the lower lash line to kind of match to the bottom what I did to the top. And then just like the last look, I went in with the deeper brown and I applied that to the outer half of the eye using a fluffy brush. This one is a little bit more neutral or cooler in tone and it also is darker and deeper. I do think you can use this to create a little bit more of a smoky effect unlike the other palette. And then similarly with the applicator, I used the white shade to bring a little bit of illumination to the center of the eye and I also applied that to the center of the lid. This white shade, it is not as poppy and pigmented as the one in Ravage. It's just as pretty but it's not as bright. I feel like in Ravage, they really kind of went for it with the white because it's just a lighter and brighter palette. This one, 
it's just a little bit more subdued so kind of keep that in mind and before i go in with the navy blue shade friends i did just want to show you what this look would look like if you didn't use the blue if you just wanted a completely neutral look this could be a really great option for you you could use any of these as kind of like a one and done but this is a review so of course I need to use the navy blue. So I used the little skinny applicator and I actually use this as a liner today. So I just kind of smudged it along the top lash line. I just did the top because I wanted this to be a very wearable look using the blue. I also winged it out ever so slightly, just a little bit. Then I applied some mascara and this is what the look with Eden Rock looks like. Just a little like hint of navy blue smoke. I think it's really, really pretty. Kind of reminds me of like the shoreline and then you got the water right there you know that was my inspiration friend so comment down below let me know what you think of this look i do want to comment a little bit more about this navy blue though because i did play around with this palette using the blue a little bit more and seeing if i could build it up i want to show you guys a clip of a look that I did yesterday where I took the navy blue and I really tried to build it up more in the outer half of the crease. Something that I would do, you know, if I wanted to maybe smoke it out a little bit more, or like I said, just have the blue be a little bit more prominent. I posted this look to Instagram and a lot of you guys liked it. So I wanted to make sure that I show it to you all in this review so you can kind of see the versatility of this palette. I don't think that this blue is super duper pigmented it's not a matte it is a satin i don't really think this is the best blue to be using for a super duper smoky eye this is very soft so i don't recommend necessarily taking a brush and like really trying to build it up because i just don't think you're really going to get there i think that using something that's fluffier and just kind of keeping it to a very specific section like the outer half of the eye or on the lash line is probably the best way to go i also wanted to mention friends i don't have any of the lip products from this collection yet the lip maximizers that are a part of this are not launched yet so we're kind of waiting for those but i did want to just demo for you guys i have a very similar shade to the one that's getting launched which is called bronze this actually was an older shade that was called bronze that was limited edition so i just wanted to show you what this looks like on the lips i think i think that this is going to be a very very similar shade to one of the ones that they're launching as a part of this collection you know a lot of you guys are sad that you cannot get this color anymore because i wear it so much it honestly goes so perfectly with this collection so as soon as those launch i will let you guys know but i just wanted to show this as an example if you guys are curious what is on my lips today there's a very similar shade that is going to be launched in this new collection very very soon we need to move on to the limited edition bronzers now these are called the dior forever natural bronze they retail for 55 dollars. i picked up the shade 003 soft bronze which is described as being for light to medium skin these are made in italy they have a 12 month shelf life and they are also talc free in fact all the products in this video are talc free i've been checking more often because a lot of you guys have been asking about them so rest assured everything is talc free now this is not a new product from Dior. This is actually a bronzer that I really, really like. It's just in limited edition packaging. I'll show you guys some close-ups of the packaging. It is so, so cute. I hate to tempt you guys who already own this, but the packaging is really cute. It's supposed to be inspired by a boater hat and the fabric is kind of like a summertime linen, I guess I would describe it. It's really, really cute. And then you have that similar like boater hat little you know, embossing on the actual product inside. The thing you need to know about this formula, friends, is that it's pretty soft and very natural. It's very blendable. It's just a really nice natural bronze. I would say try and go for a color that is maybe like one, sometimes two shades darker than what you might think to get. I actually have shade 004 and it's very light natural and also very neutral i got shade 003 i would say this might even be like a little bit darker maybe the same amount of depth but it's a little bit warmer let me show you guys the demo of me applying this you guys will notice it's very very blendable it blends out like so so easily on my face i'll link these brushes down below by the way when i first apply it you see a lot of pigment but then it's so easy to just kind of buff into the skin oh i love these you guys know i've talked about these in the past in some of my other reviews while i like the formula and i like the packaging one thing that i want to note that kind of stinks is that dior didn't produce these in the lightest shade which is zero one and the deepest shade which is zero eight at least i don't see them on the website they made all of the middle shades but like they didn't include 
the outer shades, which is a little bit lame in my opinion. I hate it when brands do that. If you all are interested in this color, I do want to show you guys a very quick swatch comparison. Here at the top, we have the Dior 003, the one that I have right now. Then we have the Hermes bronzer that I reviewed for you all in the shade Atlas. Notice how these are like almost the same, guys, all right? This, I would almost go as far as saying that like this is a dupe color-wise and the formula is just as nice. So you can save a little bit of money. I mean, it's a 50 $5 bronzer. It's not cheap by any means, but it is half the price of the Hermes one. So I wanted to call that out to you all. And then the third swatch that I have there, that is the Guerlain Terracotta Light in the shade Light Warm. That one, because it's more of like a blush and bronzer hybrid, it has a little bit more pigmentation and it's also like a little bit peachier in tone. Now it's time for my favorite part. We're talking about the Dior Forever Coacher Luminizers. I love this product. I actually collect these. I have a full shopping guide swatching and applying all of the main permanent line shades here on my channel so I can link that down below in case you guys want to take a look. They actually have two shades in this summer collection. I only have one because the other one is not for sale yet which is a little bit annoying. New York always does this kind of stuff. I don't know when it's gonna come back, guys, I'm sorry. But when that comes in stock, I will get it and I'll do some sort of follow-up for you guys. These retail for $50. Oh my goodness, I know, $50 for a highlighter. They are made in France. They have a 12 month shelf life. And as I mentioned, they are talc free. The packaging, unfortunately, I don't know why they did this. I don't know why they didn't make it like the bronzer, but the packaging for this is just the regular like Dior canage quilting. Quick little history fact, the canage quilting is the pattern on the upholstered chairs that Christian Dior had in his atelier. And so that's why you kind of see it a lot on like the Lady Dior bag and the makeup items and that kind of stuff. So I like the packaging. I was just kind of hoping for like the cute little linen boater hat that type of style, but this will suffice. The color that I have for you today, friends, is number 002 Coral Cruise. It is described as an iridescent coral pink, and I'll show you guys some swatches here. I think that's actually a really great description. It's like a soft mixture of gold and light coral. The finish and the texture of this are very much the same as like the usual luminizers. Like there's nothing different here in terms of formula. It's really just a limited edition color. And then the other one that is not on the site, that one is called number 001 Golden Cruise, and it is described as a sun-kissed gold. That's the one that unfortunately I don't have yet, but make sure you're subscribed to my channel channel because I'll have some sort of follow-up whenever that becomes for sale. Understandably so, I've received a lot of questions about how this new luminizer compares to other ones that have been launched in the past. So I'm going to show you guys a comparison right now. We've got the Coral Cruise. This is the new one. Then we have Pink Riviera, which is the one that was launched last year that has that pinky tone. Then we have Coral Glow from the main line. That's probably the most vibrant one. And then I have Rosewood Glow, which is a little bit more neutral. I'll show you guys the swatches here in the same order. So at the top, Coral Cruise, which is more golden than you think. Like it has more of a gold shift. It's really, really cool. And then we have Pink Riviera, which is the most true pink one out of the bunch. Unfortunately, that's not available anymore. Then we have Coral Glow. This one is really great for like a glowy blush. It's also good for deeper skin tones. And then there is Rosewood Glow, which is the most neutral. This is a really good blush topper. It's a really good luminizer for those of you with deeper skin tones. And then unfortunately, the one that I don't have with me right now is Pink Glow. But I'll just tell you off the bat, guys, Pink Glow, it's much icier. It's kind of like a really fair, icy ballet pink. I think it's going to be a lot lighter than this one from the summer collection. I'll show you guys the demo of me applying this. It goes on super duper smooth. I think on my skin tone, this is definitely a highlighter, whereas some of the ones from years past are like the Coral Glow in the main line, for example. It's more of like a glowy blush, almost like the new Chanel Pastel Pink blush. It's kind of like that. That's sort of how I wear those deeper colors. This one very much kind of melts into my skin tone, but I think because it has that golden shift, I think it's actually gonna work for some of you out there who are a little bit more tan and like deeper in skin tone. I also think that this is gonna look absolutely stunning on the eyes. You can kind of use it as like a one and done eye look as well. So hopefully that demo is helpful. I really tried to get that natural light onto my cheeks and kind of see that like duo chromey finish that it has. Woo! Are you still with me, friends? Now it is time for my final thoughts. I'm going to try and help you guys figure out if any of this is worth 
picking up. I think with a lot of Dior collections in general, none of the makeup is bad. I enjoy using all of it. It just really depends on what you're looking for, your style, your taste, and what you have in your collection already because it is very expensive. It is. I'm going to try and help you guys out. Now, the collection as a whole, I do think it's a little bit uninspired. I just don't think it is the most interesting. I really do like the collection from last year a lot better, specifically with the eyeshadow palettes. I mean, I just don't understand why they decided to launch two palettes that were so, so similar. I also noticed that this formula, it's a little bit softer, at least from the formula that they launched for this collection last year. Let me show you guys a side-by-side -side of these palettes versus the ones that I got a year ago. I thought it was a little odd because I use those palettes from last year all the time, but you don't really see the embossing on the pan really worn away all that much. On this palette, Rivage, that I have here, you know, I got it a little bit early and I've been using it, but I haven't, you know, had it for a full year and you can already see that the embossing has worn away quite a bit. Now, I'm not trying to say that this formula isn't as good. I'm not. I'm just saying it's a little bit different. It's a little bit like softer and more powdery. And so, I don't know, maybe that's why this palette is a little bit softer. The palettes in general from last summer were more pigmented. I want to comment on each of the palette color stories, starting off with Rivage. Now, this is a pretty boring palette, I know. Like, the color story is not groundbreaking. So I know a lot of us, we're already going to have this in our collection. I think you need to keep in mind that this palette, it is very light. You can't really build up these colors all that much. A lot of them kind of blend into each other. But, you know, you do have a lot of really nice wearable shades here. I love the white. I love the brightness it gives to the eye. I also really like this shade right here that adds a little bit of depth. This is for the customer that wants something really easy, a one and done. I actually can see a lot of friends that I know in real life enjoying this palette. People that use the little applicator, then they just go in, they do their little eyeshadow. It looks cute. It's very neutral. It's very easy and blendable. And they're, they're good. They, they have a cute little eyeshadow look. In fact, I actually really like the looks that I create with this palette. It's pretty much the same look every time, not gonna lie but I have been wearing it nonstop. This is the kind of palette that I would bring on vacation with me because it's I'm just lazy when I'm on vacation. I want like a really neutral, cute look. So maybe that's what they're going for. I don't wanna say just because something is a little bit softer isn't good. I think that if you're not looking for that, don't go for this palette. But there is a, a really pretty like sheen and iridescence. And I know some of you guys also got this palette early and you were telling me that you really enjoy it as well. There's just like something about it that I really do like. But that being said, you can dupe this palette with other things that you have in your collection. You don't need to pick this up. I do foresee myself using this quite a bit this summer because it's just so travel friendly. It's a really nice neutral from Dior. I don't think I have a neutral palette like this soft and easy from Dior. So I really don't regret it. But you do need to know it's very soft. A lot of the colors are kind of same, same, but different. It's it's pretty dupable. Oh, I also should mention, I've actually worn this palette in several of my videos without you guys knowing. And every single time that I wear this palette, you all comment down below and you're like, what's on your eyes? What's on your eyes? Your, your eye look looks so pretty today, Sophia. So if any of you guys were thinking that this palette was trash, just know a lot of you guys have complimented me and I also have gotten a lot of compliments in real life. So just a little little tidbit for you guys there. Next, we have Eden Rock. Clearly this one is more pigmented. So if that's what you're looking for, if you don't want that sort of like ethereal, you know, sunny sands kind of look that you get from Rivage and you're just like, no, I don't have time for that. I want things that have more pigmentation. I can see the shades on my eye differentiated a little bit better. Then I think this palette is going to be good for you. I still don't think it's like as metallic as the ones from last year but I do like the fact that we have these really pretty like nice summery sandy tones it is a very wearable palette and I like that there's sort of the option of the blue so for that I think that this palette it's a little bit more versatile I do want to point out though I have like a little swatch comparison for you guys that blue it's not, like I said before, it's not that pigmented. I really couldn't build it up much on the eye. I prefer it more so as kind of a liner like I did today. I'm actually really happy with this look, but you guys can see here, this is the Dior shadow from this palette. This is the blue from the new Guerlain palette, which I know has been a little bit hard to get. 
here's what the palette looks like. This is Guerlain's summer collection. Already reviewed this for you guys. But I wanted to show you just like how more sensational that blue is. See that beautiful shimmer and sparkle? It's just like a little bit more multi-dimension. Whereas this one from Dior, see how it kind of just like blends out. It's not like some crazy blue and you need to get this just because it has the blue. You can totally dupe the vibes of this palette by just using any other kind of neutral palette that you have in your collection. And then maybe you have the denim palette from Dior. Maybe you got that blue velvet one from Dior. Or you can just use a navy eyeliner. I will link some of my favorites down below. So I like this palette too. I like this palette too, but it is still just kind of like a neutral palette with a navy that's like just okay. So in conclusion, I think these are nice. I actually think I'm going to use them quite a bit this summer. I'm probably going to bring both together along with me when I travel and just like dip into shades across the palettes. I enjoy them. Like I've been enjoying them, but I don't think they're like an absolute must have. I like the collection from last year a lot more. These are not going to be, they're probably not going to be holy grails in my collection. I'll just tell you that. And in general, I'm a little bit disappointed because I think that Dior could have done a much better job being inspired by this very breathtaking place you know the French Riviera and that beautiful luxury hotel I would have loved to have seen you know maybe some more metallic -y shades some toppers to really mimic like the sun on the ocean and just like the glimmer of the sand at least they could have given us maybe a little bit more of a mixture of finishes and if I had that I would be a little bit more likely to recommend them. Moving along to the bronzer, like I said, I really, really like this formula. It's not a new product, but I do think it is a great bronzer. I absolutely love the packaging. I would recommend this, you know, if you don't have this bronzer already, maybe pick it up in this really cute packaging. In terms of this shade, you know, when I first swatched it, I thought it was going to be way too warm. Now that I see it on my face, I kind of really like it. So comment down below, let me know what you think of this. The shade that I think suits a lot of people best is 004 because it is much more neutral. And I do think it works on sort of fair to medium skin tones. Don't be scared of the fact that it's like number four out of eight for whatever reason. It's still really light and natural and buildable. So that's kind of the safe color that I recommend to most of you is 004. If you have a more golden undertone, then I would go with this one, 003 Soft Bronze. Now for the Luminizer. I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. I know I'm obsessed with these, but I'm obsessed with them because they're pretty consistently good. They're very expensive though. So I think you need to ask yourself, you know, look at the comparisons. Do you have anything like this in your collection already? I think that this is a little bit more interesting than your average release. It's a little bit more interesting than the ones that they have in the main line because it has kind of like, it's not duochrome, but you can see here when I shine it in the light, it is a mixture of a really pretty light coral and a light gold. And I think because it has that golden element, it's going to work for a lot of skin tones. It's basically just a lighter version of my favorite shade from the main line, which is this one, Coral Glow. Notice how this one is deeper but it still has that kind of golden character to it. That's what this reminds me of. It, it kind of looks like they took this one, Coral Glow, and they made it a little bit more adaptable to maybe lighter skin tones or something that can be more of a highlighter because I think for a lot of people, unless you are pretty deep in tone, this is kind of more of like a fun glowy blush. This is actually my favorite item that I picked up from this collection. I know it's $50, so it is expensive, but at least it's a little bit more unique than just like your regular gold highlighter. Hopefully the other shade, Golden Cruise, will become available pretty soon so I can compare them. If it fits within your budget, I think it's absolutely stunning. All right, friends, that is all I have for you today. Thank you for bearing with me. I know I tend to get a little bit excited and very detailed with my Dior reviews, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I love summer and I love Dior, so I honestly just can't help myself. Now it is your turn. Sound off in those comments down below. Let me know, you know, do you have any questions about this? What did you think of the products? What do you think of this collection as a whole? Because I feel like it's going to be pretty controversial. Some people love it. Some people are like, eh pretty boring. So let's share all of our thoughts in the comment section. Also, if you already got any of these pieces and you've been trying them out, let us know how you've been liking them. 
Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really, really helps me out. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to those of you who have shopped through my affiliate links to purchase this collection so far. It really means a lot to me and it helps me fund these rather pricey reviews for you all. So I just wanted to give a quick thank you to you all. I'm gonna link all these products down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. <laughs>